What's the difference between taking a photo and making a photo? Taking a photo is pointing the camera and hoping something cool shows up. Making a photo is telling the world what you want it to look like. Just remembering that statement alone will change how you view pictures from now on. However, some tangible advice could be good for you as well. So here's some easy tips and tricks to take better photos in Genshin Impact. Fun reminder that the word photograph means a map of where light is. So understand where light comes from and how you can use it to your advantage. The best example is that Genshin allows you to change time at will so you can absolutely warp reality to suit your needs. You can make the sun shine from directly above or from the side depending on what time of day it is, meaning where the sun or moon is in the sky. The same principle applies to any glowing light found in the world or even from abilities and idle animations. When you know where light is coming from, you know how to move with or around it. If there's a bright spot on one side of her face, you can obviously assume the strongest light is coming from that direction. How does this affect the photo? Well, sometimes the light may cast unflattering lines and shadows on the character's face and sometimes ruins what could have been a perfect photo if the light didn't make it look like the game failed to render half her face. Work with the light or around it. Never feel like you're stuck or have to settle. A slight turn can make a world of difference. If you really want to take a photo of a character, try your best to literally make the world revolve around them. You can often find lots of ways to make something like a picture frame around them, thus making the viewer focus and appreciate your favorite waifu. You could find a doorway or a gateway to put their head right in the center to highlight them. Or you can even find a rounded object that wraps around their head nicely. Anything that surrounds the subject to make them highlight it in a way. The reason you may want to try this is in cases where there are lots of things in the background that make the viewer look somewhere else. Finding that frame helps keep the subject more important to look at while letting other things be less distracting. From this view, lots of things around A make you look away from her a lot. And just by tilting the camera, you can see the mountain revolves around her and surrounds her and makes you look right at her in all her majestic glory, with the bonus of having something cool in the background to compliment her. Sometimes being the center of attention isn't as powerful as you hope. When the game has such great backgrounds to capture, using them with your character can create powerful and meaningful photos. Take this scene for example. A is at the center while the shrine and the trees are off to the side. If you aim the camera to balance the space in the picture, between the shrine and A, you get a much more interesting image where your eyes can travel back and forth comfortably between them without being distracted by everything else around them. Incorporating an element in the background gives additional detail or suggests a relationship, story, or message. During times where you want extreme focus and nothing to distract you from the main subject, try to create high contrast. Let nothing take your eyes off of the subject. You can do this either with extreme close-ups or far away shots. Find a space that has less variation of color and detail, then plop your character right in. If there is a wide space of gray, even the smallest pink speck becomes irresistible to the eyes. These three basic yet foundational tips are great to improve upon over time and explore with and practice. They help with the general aiming of your camera with intent rather than just hoping something interesting shows up. But let me show you some interesting camera tricks and techniques that could be fun to play with and experiment. The camera is a physical item in the world. No, not something you can see, but I mean it has collision physics. The camera will bump into walls and objects. This means if you aim the camera with your back to the wall and move the character closer, you get a zoom effect. And that means you can capture attack animations closer and with more detail. You can zoom in before you take the shot, and the camera will naturally reset and zoom out as you move. So, use the placement of the camera near hard objects and walls to make it move in and out as you please. You might already know about the blur option and may have even used it, but motion blur is an advanced form of it. You can direct the blurring by moving your camera in a certain direction quickly and taking the picture. This can imply motion and speed in a photo, even if the character is idle. First, make sure the motion blur setting is turned on to let the camera be able to see this effect, and then practice this a few times. Get a sense of the direction and timing with the character animations because when used with a camera gadget, you can get some pretty cool action shots. Notice how 
notice something weird that A is doing? Her head is turned, but she's not facing the camera. The camera setting that turns her head always forces her head to face the camera. Sometimes when the character poses at an angle, they have a little bit more dignified stance or even one with more personality if you change their expression. If you walk close to a named NPC, the character will turn their head to look at them. So, three tips, three tricks, as promised. One last thing I wanted to point out, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, all these pictures were taken in the same area. So you don't ever have to travel far to find a great spot for pictures. In a game like this, great scenes are everywhere, so keep your eyes up, look around, and you'll find a great place to make a photo. If you found this useful, don't forget to click the...